Today's video is going to be a bit annoying for me because I tried to record this yesterday and it horribly screwed up. Ouch. With that said, this is a camera I picked up some time ago, a couple years. Now, when I originally came across one of these, I was in primary school and the vice principal made an announcement to everyone that don't drop the digital camera. He drops the digital camera. Many years after that, I'm in a Department of Education building. I'm assisting with a deployment of computers. What else? And the guy comes up to me and goes, says my name, you're, you're him. You're like, yeah, and he just walks off. I was a bit, um, I, I was bullied a lot in school, so I ended up spending a fair amount of time with the principal. So yeah, getting into trouble is a bit common, whether it was my fault or uh, I've been the one beaten up. Anyway, with that said, yeah, so uh, when I came across thing, this thing years later, I'm like, sweet, I want it. Took it home. And I then spent about $10 buying a battery for it. And it works. The only thing is it doesn't seem to know how long the battery is going to last for, which well, considering it's a cheap knockoff, well, what do you expect? And you've got a far better view of this better than I do. Now, this camera itself is a bit special because of how old it is. Apparently, it uses a camcorder, um, well, module instead of like a, what you'd see nowadays in digital cameras. But uh, yeah, I've got photos on here. I gotta remember to keep using this thing properly because otherwise it's bleh. So I've got a bunch of old photos on here. If I take the lens off. Eh. Now, there isn't an interface on here. So this is like before USB. It does have a floppy drive. And this is where the video comes into play because I gotta find some way of getting files from this and onto a computer. Now, normally, what you used to be able to do is take the floppy drive, stick it into the computer and copy them off. It's not that simple anymore. You do that with uh, SD cards and they, Sony did make an adapter. I did find, find one, tried to use it didn't work. So I don't know if the device itself is broken or if the flop, I don't even think the uh, camera is compatible with that thing anyway. So it was a bit of a headache. Well, a place I worked at, I got this from an employer and it was, well, this thing still works perfectly fine. There's really nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's lightweight. You can just plug it in. It's great. When I grabbed it, it was like, ooh, um, you know, it's just sort of sitting there in a box, not being used. Mind if I take it? So, yeah, okay. Thank you. This has been very useful. I'll say that much for a lot of different things. Now, I also came across this cheap piece of uh, crap, and I'm only calling it that because it stopped working. I may do a video later on about fixing this one, but that's depending on whether or not I can actually fix it or replace or you know, whatever. But let's just pretend that you keep looking and all you can find are these. Now these are your stock standard floppy drives. I do also have some other different types, but I figured, you know, this will be great. Now offhand, they all, I mean, the layout's going to be a little bit different, but they're all basically the same sort of thing. Uh, a floppy drive, well, to a point. So, when you're using something like USB 2, like what I've got an extension cable here to, to my laptop, um, can you do the same with this? Yes. Yes, you can. But there's a bit of a caveat. Uh, is that even the right sort of term I'm thinking of here? Anyway. Uh, if you're going to hook this up through USB, you need to be able to, well, hook it up to USB. And that's where this thing comes in, which I tried to open it tore and I made some sort of a laugh about how I hate Ziploc bags and, and it doesn't matter anymore. 
So, I got this thing. It's about 20 bucks on eBay. In my last video, which ended up failing, we, dis we discovered that this side's the uh, top. So, should I use a floppy drive? It's like, well, okay, that's a good idea. But which one's going to work? And the major issue, and a lot of people would probably ignore this, or the videos I've seen about this particular device, or at least an iteration of it, is, oh, it's just going to work. No, it's not. <laughs> if you are into data archaeology and you are considering about doing something like this, I highly recommend buying one of these, as long as it's like a, a, a proper one. But the other thing would be a power supply. Now you can get a Molex, which is the old connector to the floppy. So it's got a female Molex and a male sort of, well, it's got one of these on there. And then that allows you to hook it up to a power supply. You can get power supplies for external hard drives, for uh, yada yada, the USB to serial, USB to IDE, sorry, USB to um, starter, that sort of thing. Now you use that to power this externally because running it off five volts may not work. To explain that even more, USB 2 is only capable of outputting about 500 milliamps, which is half an amp, so 0 0.5 amps. Um, USB 3 is about 1.5 amps, so that's a lot of power, and with the three drives I've got here, I can tell you that it's going to be like overkill, but it isn't going to work. Just because you think it's going to work doesn't mean it will. Hence the reason why external power supply, at which point you want to power the device first and then plug it into USB. I'll repeat that. When powering one of these externally with an external power source, make sure the drive is powered before plugging into USB. Very, very, very important. Now with that said, how on earth do you tell if one of these floppy drives or if all of them or if only some of them are going to work on uh, directly off USB. Well, that's actually simple, if you can read the label. Let's start off with this one, shall we? Now, I don't know how you can... Can you see that better? Yep. Now this one it has on here, 5 volt DC at 0 0.7 milliamps. So that's 700 milliamps. Hence, uh, uh, 0 0.07 amps. So that's 700 milliamps. And you, if you see that, you, you should be able to then turn around and go, oh, 0 0.6, 600 milliamps, yada, yada, yada. If you don't know, just punch it into Google. Just convert um, amps to milliamps and type. If you can't use Google, then you need a lot of help. Or at least a search engine or calculator, for Christ's sake. And I'm not going to give you the formula for that. It's not my responsibility to today. So we know that this requires 700 milliamps to operate. That's too much for USB 2, which is a problem because we can't use this on USB 2. But we should be able to do it on USB 3. This one, what do we got here? We have 5 volts at 900 milliamps, or 0.9 amps. That is definitely not going to work. And I can actually say that because I did try to run this off USB 3 and it did not work. So whether there's a problem with the mechanism internally, if it needs cleaning, it doesn't work. So what about our last one? What the? Ooh. 5 volts at 0 0.42 amps. 420 milliamps, if I'm correct. That's less than 500 milliamps. That is like really pushing it, and probably something you'd find with an external hard drive, you know, little passport things that are, yeah, anyway. Well, this one should be more interesting to try out. So, what I'll do is I will plug it in, and I'll plug that in. 
Now, you don't want to have to be screwing around with this too much once uh, it's been initialized because you could accidentally zap yourself and then kill a lot of electronical stuff which you don't really want to let out the uh, magic smoke, as I've learned. Speaking of which, another magic smoke video I've got. Um, yeah, I got to get around to finishing that. Okay, so I am going to hit record on my other on my laptop desktop uh, to my laptop sorry and we'll see what happens and we'll see what happens and you probably didn't see that but it was um, sort of flickering a bit so something was going on anyway um, let's pop in my floppy drive, uh, my floppy disk. Yeah. And over on the laptop, I'll open up here. I'll go to PC and I'll try to open up the floppy drive. Ooh. We have... We've got a photo! Hey! Alright. New folder. S O N Y F D. And this is the 75 model. So, because there's not the uh, default way to just simply import, I'm just going to copy and paste. Whoops. Yeah, that was my old workstation, you saw. Whoops. Yeah, that was my old workstation, you saw. So copy, paste, drag, and drop. Huh. wonder what that's about. Who cares? Done. So copy, paste, drag, and drop. Huh, I wonder what that's about. I guess. Done! I can take that out now. Now let's try to do that again. Taking out the disk, you don't have to safely remove it. I am, however, going to do a safe remove on the laptop of the floppy drive. I can take that out now. Now let's try to do that again. Taking out the disk, you don't have to safely remove it. I am, however, going to do a safe remove on the laptop of the floppy drive. Unplug. And unplug that. And unplug that. Now, this 700 milliamp one, I'm going to try it over USB 2 because I am extraordinarily curious to see if this will work. So I'll just plug this in. I'll plug this back in. Unplug. And unplug that. And unplug that. Now, this 700 milliamp one, I'm going to try it over USB 2 because I am extraordinarily curious to see if this will work. So I'll just plug this in. I'll plug this back in. Pop in a floppy disk. I will open up folders, go to computer. All right. Now, what's happening right now on my laptop is what this one was doing. So, if you see that and the drive's not responding, it could potentially mean that plug it into USB 3.0 if you've got it, or you need an external power supply, so 
If you have a couple of floppy disks, do check them out. Do check the ratings. If it's lower than 0 0.5 milliamps, uh, 0 0.5 amps, you should be good. Unless, of course, it's dirty, at which point you're going to be screwed. Um, unless, of course, you clean it out. So I'm not going to fret. I'm just going to stop. I'm going to unplug my, sorry, eject the floppy drive. And I'm going to connect it into USB 3. Let's see what this does. All right, so the LED was just on, turned itself off. I'm going to pop in my floppy disk. Now, if you're, if you're in this position, just hit F5 on your keyboard and it refreshes the screen so, uh, or the window. Ah, looks like it's not going to work now. You. Yep, and that's not good. So you should realize that because you can't buy these like brand new, I mean, you could buy them. Um, that's a term I'm thinking of. Basically a product that's never been sold and it's just being sold like 10, 20, 30 years after it was initially. Yeah, anyway, you... They're not ma manufacturing these things anymore. So I'll just check. Okay, reconnected. And loading. Nope, it doesn't seem to want to work this time. Oh well. One out of three isn't bad, I suppose. If you ever do, if you are going through and running one of these sort of things yourself and you come across a floppy disk cleaner, um, all that thing should be is your yeah, stock standard floppy drive, except the inside, it doesn't have the magnetic like that. It should be something like a white fabric you're supposed to put isopropyl alcohol on it and that helps clean the head now there are other ways of doing it but it's just like an easier way so if you do get into data archaeology with floppy disks and you do come across your opportunity don't say no to it anyway with that said all right you know for a 20 dollar device this was definitely worth it it's great because I've got a ton of old floppy disk drives that I can actually use now. And I do have a ton of floppy disks. I even have a couple of ones that have been uh, haven't been opened before. So, you know, that's like new old stock is the term I was looking for. New old stock. Anyway, with that said, I'm going to try to edit this video together and smoosh it all up to make it work. Yibbidi yibbidi.